Regular Book World, I want to welcome you to a new reading vlog. I'm starting this vlog off by reading The X Talk. This is by Rachel Lynn Solomon. I'm on chapter 13 and I'm on page 146. The main character, Shay Goldstein, I she is totally relatable to me. She is 5'2 and she struggles to climb up to sit on bar stools. She says people that are short are very gifted in climbing on counters to reach things. I am so in that category. She's 5'2 and I'm 4'6 and a half. And I can so relate to the big stools that you have to climb into to actually take a seat. And most people take that for granted. And my brother has a set of these stools and I always say to him, I need to sit somewhere else because these stools are just too high and I hate having to climb the stool to get a seat and I always feel like I'm going to fall off the seat. Um, hashtag short people problems. <laughs> so it's totally relatable a lot of the things that she is describing as far as her height and what she goes through. Shay Goldstein is also Jewish which I am like yes Jewish representation right here. The cast of characters in this book is a well diverse cast which hopefully you would find at any job that you're at a radio station or wherever you're working I hope that you have a, a wide diversity of individuals working there because if you don't you're missing out anyway this book I, I, really, I really love the the witty banter back and forth I can totally relate to Shay on so many levels. But this is this is really, really good so far. I but I'm only on page one forty eight of chapter thirteen and I just wanted to pop in and give you my thoughts and let you know what I think about the book so far because it is quite amazing. I made a homemade vegetarian chicken casserole with tofu chicken and I've made this before and it's really good. I use um, lo mein noodles to add a little crunch on the top of the casserole. Most people use Ritz crackers but I prefer using the lo mein noodles. It gives it an extra bit of a kick that I, I like. So that's what I made for dinner tonight. Hello book world. I have an unboxing for y'all today. I got a package from Barnes and Noble that I have been dying to open. So I'm going to open that right now. The first book that I ordered was the next, it's the next book in the Cozy Mystery series. I believe it's book four or five, but it's Decaffeinated Corpse. I'm hoping to read this book sometime next month, maybe in March. Then I have a few other books that I would prefer to read. Okay. This is, there is another cozy mystery by the same name, but it's by a different author. This is Game of Cones. But I wanted the Cozy Mystery Game of Cones by Abby Colette. I'll put the book cover right here. That's the book I actually wanted to, to get. And I ended up getting a second copy of this book. I wanted to read Abby Colette's book because I really enjoyed her series as well. So I guess I'm going to have to wait and get, get the book when it comes out. As soon as I can. <laughs> oh well. I hate it when they have more than one book that has the same title and you end up purchasing the wrong book. <sighs> well, it's my fault for not double checking the author when I ordered the book online. Struggles. First world problems, right? <laughs> 
anyway, that is my unboxing. Hopefully I can rectify this situation with this particular copy of Game of Cones and get the Abby Colette version that I actually wanted to receive. world i have just finished the x talk the book is basically about shay and dom shay is a producer on a npr radio show and dom is a new hire who hasn't been there more than not even a year but they had a hiring freeze and he is a journalist and he wants to be this serious journalist. And they don't get along very well. See, Shay is like the Roz Doyle of NPR. She's the producer. She produces some of the shows and everything. And their boss, their misogynistic boss, Kent, decides that he wants them to host a radio show called The X Talk. So he wants a show to revolve around them as being ex-boyfriend and girlfriend and have a show working around the fact that they're still friends and they get along. I did enjoy the book though. Intimate scenes, I will say, are rough and wild, so be prepared for that. But the story premise is amazing. I enjoyed the story so much. I gave this book a five out of five. So if you are interested in a story about podcast radio shows or if you're interested in NPR at all then uh, definitely pick up this book because it is one of the best romance books that I've I've read uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this book uh, I, I'm going to have some dinner and I will catch you later bye Chapter 9 of Black Buck. This is a novel by Matteo Ascapor. This book does have a few problematic elements that I can tell you right now. The N-word is thrown around like it is a pair of shoes. I, I don't like that word. I don't care what nationality, ethnicity you are. I, the N-word is just not a word that I, I feel anybody of any race or creed should be spewing out of their mouth. So, to me, that was a little problematic. It gives license to other people feeling that it's okay to use that word. That just really gets to me. I understand, you know, there are some things in culture going on he here and maybe I'm too white to understand it. I don't, I don't know. The company that he is working for, honestly, if this was a company that was a federally owned company, upper management and management would have so many lawsuits due to harassment or discrimination. The main character, Devin, he is pulling himself up by the bootstraps and he is making something out of himself throughout the book. It, it, it seems to read as if it were a self-help book for people of color. Seeing what this character is going through to be a part of 
this Fortune 500 Silicon Valley type company. It, it boggles the minds. <laughs> but I haven't finished the book and I, I'm not going to make any final decisions about how I feel until I go through the book. I need to really dive in to this book a lot more. Like I said, I'm only on chapter 9, so I can get a little bit. Hello, book world. I have finished reading Black Buck by Matteo Ascapar. I am going to give this book a 2.75 out of 5 stars. This book is about Darren, who lives in Bed-Stuy in a brownstone apartment complex that his mom owns. He is 22 years old, very in intelligent, went, was valedictorian of his class in high school, and is now the boss at Starbucks. He is a manager at Starbucks. I thought that this book would be very cute and adorable because it is kind of a rags to riches story as the protagonist, Darren, is spotted as talent as he is a barista at the local Starbucks. He's spotted by a guy who was the CEO of a tech startup company called Someone. This is a unconventional company that makes their employees jump through hoops and there's a lot that goes on in the book. As I said before, the book was problematic because of the dialogue and the verbiage used in the book. I didn't appreciate some of the language as I stated before, but I won't go into that. But it also makes the reader feel that in order to be successful, you have to be willing to sell your soul and to the devil himself, so to speak, in order to seal the deal if you if you want to. This character is very flawed. Darren is a very flawed character in the decisions that he makes as far as with his family. And there is drug use involved in this book. A as you know, people on Wall Street will use the drug. I won't go into detail what the drug is. Everybody knows what the drug is. But if you are a fan of the movie The Wolf on Wall Street, this book is likened to that book. It is very brutal, cutthroat, and I just don't feel that it's a very good representation of what you need to do to be a successful person in life and to make money. I had at first felt that this was going to be a self-help book that is pretending to be a self-help book that is geared more toward the African American community and communities of color. As, of course, the main protagonist, like I said, is from Bed-Stuy, which is Chris Rock's neighborhood, Bed-Stuy, do or die. I love Chris Rock. He is so awesome. I love his show, Everybody Hates Chris. But anyway, the writing was very good. It's just, I felt it was problematic. I also felt that I wasn't the audience that this book was geared toward. Although, even though I am an individual that is white. If I did have a son or daughter of color, I do not feel that I want them to read this book because I don't want them to think that this to be successful, a lot of the things done in this book, that it's okay to do some of the things that occur in this book. That is my review for Black Buck. I'm sorry I didn't enjoy this book as much as I had hoped to enjoy the book. It happens sometimes. I almost gave this book a one star because it was so problematic. I did want to show you a bookmark that a friend of mine made for me that I absolutely love. She made this with her own hands and I just love this bookmark. It's blingy and has my name on it and music notes because I did major in music education. <laughs> I just, I just love it. It's so me.
y'all, I am exhausted. I went to Bath and Body Works and Barnes and Noble as you saw. I picked up a few items. I, I picked up a loofah, aromatherapy, rose vanilla, this rose vanilla scent, the lotion. I also picked up strawberry pound cake candle that I want to light sometime. It smells so good. And I haven't had strawberry pound cake in a long time, so this scent is going to be so fun. I love but butterflies so much, so I had to get a candle holder for my candle that is in the shape of butterflies. I also got... <laughs> I want to pamper myself, okay, because I I'm just in need of pampering. So I, I I got a bath fizzy. It's a buttercream cupcake vanilla buttercream cupcake bath balm. So I wanted to try that out because I need some serious me time. I also picked up another candle which I'm going to burn upstairs by my bathtub called Deep Blue Sea because of ocean, water, sea. I thought that would be appropriate. <laughs> because I wanted some me time, I decided to kind of de-stress with a sea salt lamp. These lamps, people swear by them that have depression. They say they are amazing, especially by my desk. I thought that this would be nice to have while I'm working because, you know, I work from home. And it, it would just be something nice to have. It would be nice to have, you know, a, a little lamp over there. And it is very, very heavy. But that's, that's what it looks like. I also bought some bookends because I wanted to have some nice bookends for the bookshelves. So I, I bought these. I also bought some books while I was at Barnes & Noble, of course. And the books that I bought are the latest installment in the Big Shop Mystery Series, Chilled to the Cone. They have all the Big Shop Mystery Series books, except for this one because this is the newest release. Always and Forever, Laura Jean. So I wanted the Netflix tie-in to this book. Death by Chocolate Frosted Donut by Sarah Graves. Since it is Black History Month, I wanted to dive into a book that is by one of my top favorite authors, uh, Tiffany D. Jackson. I haven't read this book yet. So I wanted to read Grown. I've heard wonderful things about this book. Every book that Tiffany Jackson's written, I've enjoyed. Tiffany Jackson and Angie Thomas are my top African-American writers of all time. I just think their writing is extremely beautiful. But that is it for my haul. I am exhausted. I am going to relax, light a candle, and I'm going to take a bath because I need to, to just decompress after the day I've had. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys. Hello, the world. I am freshly laundered. Just got out of the tub and I have set up my sea salt lamp. I'm going to be watching The Black Messiah. I don't know anything uh, about the story behind this movie. I do know that it is based on true events. And it was about a black panther who was brutally murdered. And that's pretty sad that that's all I know. So I'm going to educate myself about what happened. I'm going to just watch the movie and call it a night. Early 70s. What would you tell your son about what you did then? 
Oh my gosh, guys, look what I found at the grocery store. It's Kid Cat Duos Mocha Plus Chocolate. You know I love my coffee, and <laughs> this is exciting because it has my mocha coffee feels to it. And my favorite candy bar, the Kid Cat. So, <laughs> there you go. This is going to be so delicious. I'm going to dive into that. world I wanted to go ahead and close this video off but before I do I wanted to let you know that I did read the black flamingo by Dean Ada this book is amazing if you don't know who Dean Ada is he is one of the most amazing poets in the UK and he wrote this book it is a book of poetry and it's written in verse it is about a young man named Michael it goes through his life as his childhood up to the time he's in university his grandfather mentions that there is a black flamingo found on the beach and it's mentioned in the news his grandfather tells Michael that none of the other flamingos mind that this flamingo is different. In Michael's eyes, it makes him feel that his life is just as important as everybody else's and that it is his grandfather's way of saying that he loves Michael. Michael is raised by a single mom. As he grows up and goes to university, he enters the drag scene and he becomes the drag persona of the black flamingo. The black flamingo is not only a metaphor but his drag persona michael is half jamaican and half greek so he is biracial he also experiences a lot of heartache and and trauma i wanted to get, want to give you content warning for physical abuse racism and homophobia so if you are sensitive to any of that I wanted to just give you a content warning. You can contact me and I can let you know what parts of the book have those triggers so you can skip those particular pages. Anyway, I gave The Black Flamingo five out of five stars. The poetry and the story was so amazing. I also watched the movie Judas and the Black Messiah. This movie was about Fred Hampton who is the leader of the Black Panther movement. The FBI assassinated him, and it's sad, and it breaks my heart what happened to Fred Hampton, and nothing should have happened like that, in my opinion. I did learn a lot from this movie, and I say I, I cried. It broke my heart what Deborah went through being pregnant and losing the man that she loved. Let me tell you, this movie was something that needed to be seen by me. And I give the movie 5 out of 5. But I love you guys. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos. I know they're a little disheveled and <laughs> they, they're all over the place sometimes. But y'all are amazing because you keep my spirits up. You warm my heart. And... It means so much that you would actually take the time to sit down and watch a video that little old me does. And I'm sorry that this video is so long. I just had so much to say, I guess. But I love you guys. And again, I want to thank you for being a part of my world. I love you all.